I, I think we, we can start slowly here. Uh, other people will join us. Uh, the idea today uh, is that we start getting more practical, right? Up to now, we have been, you know, discussing a lot about the possibilities of writing papers and in, uh, in, in information systems. We had well last week we had that that great uh, uh, panel with uh, three very that I consider very, uh, well, not only renowned, but very good researchers in our field, giving us ideas of topics that interest the field. Um, and of course, when we're thinking about our research, uh, we are the, one, the first ones that have to be convinced that what we want to do is uh, important, right? Uh, so it, it's, it's important, it's, it's good when we have other researchers telling us, you know, well, this, uh, this is where we came from, this is where we think uh, that we are going, as a field of research, uh, but at the same time, uh, we have our own uh, uh, inquiries. We have our own the the the, 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 the things, the questions that push us uh, uh, to do our own research. Uh, as research happens in a community, yeah, we we do not do research for our own sake. We we do research that we we will share with others, and uh, research that will have to be uh, acknowledged as valuable by others as well, it is important that whatever we're doing is also something that others will value. Otherwise, we will never be published. Right? The first, uh, for us to be published in a conference or in a journal, uh, uh, we, we need to be writing about something that interests other people in addition to us. Uh, and, and so that's, that, that's something important. This is why we, we had that discussion about well, where we came from as an area, we try to understand how information systems fits uh, other areas of computing uh, that are more, let's say, more technical in the way that they're they're more related to, to, to computing as a as an end in itself, uh, and we are we we, we 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 have computing as a means to solve problems of our society or to solve problems of our organizations, our companies. Uh, so we we have to understand that that's our community, and if we try to do something that is too far away from that and try to publish in an information systems conference or an information systems journal, our colleagues will find, well, I don't know, this seems to be good uh, uh, computer science uh, uh, theory or, or computers. This seems to be an interesting computer science paper, but it does not fit our area. So one important thing that we have to, to, to understand is if we are doing research in information systems, that research will have to be about information systems, right? Uh, so I hope that's clear uh, uh, by now uh, that we have to think of computer science as a means to solve either to solve problems of, of organizations and, and society or even to cause problems to our organizations and society, right? Because uh, one of the, the, the issues that we'll have to deal in the future is, okay, we, we as, as develop uh, as, a, as a let's say a society of engineers that develop new gadgets we are developing very interesting uh, new uh, artifacts uh, but what are those artifacts that we're developing what are their how, how are they impacting our lives how are they impacting uh, the way we live all of that will probably also be interesting to our discussion in information systems because we are not concerned with technology as an end in itself but we are concerned uh, uh, with technology as a means that affects society, that affects organizations, that changes societies, uh, our society, that changes our the organizations in which we work, and that's actually what we are we are we are we are studying in information systems. So we have to be uh, uh, conscious that to write a paper that gets accepted in information systems, we will have to deal with matters that this community is interested in. Right? That was the first uh, thing. Then we said, okay, uh, now we have to start thinking about our uh, agenda of research uh, uh, and, uh, and decide on a topic that we will be studying, right? Uh, uh, and, and again, each one of us is interested in a, in a different topic, depending on, on our, our own history, on how we got to where we are right now, on things that we think that will, will be important in the future, but we, we will have to convince others that that is uh, that's imp is important, okay? Uh, Having arrived to this uh, uh, stage, we, we, we are in a, in, a, in, a, in a time that we have to, we'll have to decide on a topic. Uh, and this is something that uh, I would like you to do, 
or to start doing and consider that our project with this let's say with the series of seminars is that we we reach early december at least with a draft of a paper uh in information systems hopefully right i know that there are some people here that are that, ha that have a mathematics major uh mainly mainly among the the, the panamanians uh and, and that you may be more interested in, in knowing how to write a generic uh, uh, academic paper than writing an academic paper for the field of information systems. But still, I would expect that you, you, you put that uh, or, or you worked on that exercise of figuring out uh, something that would be interesting to the information systems field to at least propose a draft. And today we will work on, um, let's say, the skeleton of uh, 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 a draft for a, for, for, for a paper in information systems. But again, I, I can assure you that the draft that I will show you here or that we will build together uh, is a draft that is also uh, reasonable for other areas. In fact, uh, uh, well, I was uh, uh, in, in parallel to my, my interest in, in information systems, I have done a research in, in, in operations management for quite a while, right? My, my PhD is in information uh, in operations management. Of course, I was studying back then. I was studying. Uh, uh, well, the object of my study was information systems, or uh, I was studying um, electronic commerce uh, back in the the, the, the early two thousands. Uh, uh, and uh, but but my interest back then was uh, on the operations management aspects of of, of, of uh, electronic commerce. So that's how I, I, I came into information systems. Uh, uh, later on, um, and, and even in operations, what, what what I want to say here is that in operations management, we also follow the same script that I will try to sketch here with you. So uh, to try and do that, uh, I I opened here. Let me see if I can show you. And again, uh, what do I have to do here? Change my scenes here. Uh, I'm showing you here a draft of a paper. In fact, I you will see here that I I named it. AMSIS, AMSIS is our conference next year that will happen in Panama, 2023, templates. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be the, the exact template for a paper that is submitted to AMSIS, but it's, uh, let's say, I adapted the templates uh, of a paper uh, from previous year, from a previous year, so I, they usually don't change it much. And it's a template only in, in terms of uh, ASP, in, in format, uh, uh, you know, basically size of uh, the, the size of, of, of the the writing and and and, and 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 characteristics of titles and things like that I will share this with you uh, if you want to see as, as we we go on and maybe you can even download it uh, afterwards it's probably not going to be ex the precise uh, file that uh, what do I have to do here okay uh, where is this oh let me just copy this link and share it with you here. Okay, uh, this is where I will build. I, I just shared it as uh, you're, you're, you, you, you will not be able to write there. You will only be able to read what I write, but you will be uh, requested to help me uh, to write things in this uh, template, right? For now, it's just, I mean, you can download it uh, afterwards. It's a, a docx uh, file, so it works on, on words. And basically, it, it has the format of a paper for, for AMSIS. Uh, as I, I told you, I, I'm not sure if the, the, whoever wants to send a paper, to submit a paper to AMSIS next year, will probably have to go to the website and download the template from there. I don't think that this template is available yet, uh, but it will probably look pretty much like this one. Uh, and it will start probably with a place where you write the title of your paper. And this is the first uh, thing that we have to reflect about. What should we convey on a title. When you're writing, you're writing a, a, a paper, you, you, you want to write a, an academic paper, uh, what should be the information that you include in the title? Antonio, go on. Any ideas? In the, in the title of the paper is important to mark the essential of the, of the research. Uh, normally, the developed paper is more expanded to the 20 uh, 24 words. Right, yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. So basically, the title has to be uh, uh, something that will call pe uh, people's attention. Uh, you want readers to read your paper. The first thing that they will have contact with will probably be the title. Sometimes, uh, 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 I think we have already, I have already mentioned that paper by Nicholas Carr, uh, 20, uh, 2003 paper, uh, 2003 paper, uh, IT doesn't matter. Sure. The, the title is the last thing that you will write, right? The la uh, uh, just, just to make clear, Antonio, uh, you're saying that the title is the last thing that you write. Yeah. Perfect. And yeah, and uh, I think that's let's say, well, the title should be the last thing that you polish, right? Maybe not the, the last thing that you write, because the title should already express the, the, the theme that you're working on your paper. And of course, the theme that you're going to be working is the first thing that you have to decide on, right? Uh, but of course, finding out those catchy words that will call the reader's attention. I agree with you, you Antonio, that it's something that you, you will do at the end, because at the end, you know exactly not only what you intended to do, but also what you have already delivered, what you, what you have there. So, for example, when Nicholas Carr wrote that paper and uh, and and called it or, or titled it uh, "IT Doesn't Matter," right? Uh, he knew that the content that he had written uh, would be uh, well would get much more attention if he caused that cause uh, that, that that kind of friction of uh, people saying, "How come IT doesn't matter?" Right? And of course, when you read uh, uh, Nicholas Carr's paper, you end up figuring out that it's not exactly what he's saying, that IT doesn't matter. In, in that case, what he's saying is that you should uh, be careful uh, on the way you think of IT, information technology, strategically, because if you don't uh, understand that some technology is simply used as infrastructure, uh, uh, and other technology may provide you with a competitive edge, uh, if you don't understand that difference, IT will not matter in the sense that you will not be able to use it strategically uh, to, 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 get, uh, to, 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 to get some profits uh, out of it, right? Uh, but notice, his, uh, 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 yeah, he used the, the, the title to get people's attention. I think we should always think of the title of, some, uh, of something that will call people's attention to the paper. But uh, uh, Antonio is perfectly right. It doesn't have to be the first uh, uh, thing that we write. It may be the last thing that we write, or it may be the last thing that we polish at least. We should have an idea of what we're writing about. So I, I recommend that when you start writing a paper, you have at least a provisional title, right? Uh, that will at least start guiding of, uh, you to where you want to go. Uh, and you, you may change that title um, later, depending on, on, you know, on how far you went towards uh, what you wanted to do, okay? Uh, so let's, uh, the, the title is, uh, uh, is, uh, is it is going to be very important because when people read a title that doesn't interest them, they will not even read the, the abstract, right? But, uh, but it, it may not be the most important thing to start with. All right, so uh, if we're not starting by the title, let's get down here to this abstract thing. What is an abstract? And, and someone else uh, than Antonio now. Who can tell me what an abstract is in a paper? You, 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 you mean two, abs uh, two, two, two important uh, aspects, one of them is the objective, what, what is the other one? Yes, it's, it's Okay, uh, uh, all right, I thought you had mentioned two. Uh, 
Yeah. Go on, Donna. Okay, so the objective is important because that's where you wanted to go. The findings is important because it's where you actually arrived at the end, right? Um, well, in the middle, uh, we have uh, probably the way we do it. Uh, so it's the method. Okay, so we should, uh, in, in our abstract, we should, and again, uh, uh, notice that what we'll be doing today, we will, we will think of a, a, a skeleton of a, a paper, things that should be included in each section, uh, but uh, this is not um, this is not a hard science. It doesn't have to be exactly like that, but the, we should have reasons not to follow. Um, let's say um, we, we should have reasons not to follow the practice that has been shared among the, uh, a specific community. And in general, I, I, I would say that this is not information systems community. This is the scientific community that has gotten to this agreement that, in general, the abstract includes... It's, it's a, a summary, right? Uh, uh, summary of the paper. But it's a summary uh, of the paper that includes the objective, the methods, and the findings, at least. What is the typical size of uh, uh, an abstract uh, from your experience, from what you've already seen in academic papers that you, I mean, you read in the past? How many lines, usually? How many words? <laughs> 150 words, 250 words, of course it depends. It depends on. Exactly. You ha you have to check with the conference or you have to check with the journal what is the typical size of the abstract. But it's usually, uh, as you said, 150 or 250 words. Sometimes it's uh, I don't know, 15 lines. In general, uh, what happens is that the abstract is a single paragraph in general but sometimes we see uh, papers that have an abstract that has more than a paragraph but in general it's a one solid block in which you present uh, your let's say uh, a, a, a brief idea of the what the paper is going to be about uh, let me see if I change the I don't know where I change the colors of uh, anyway I was going to change the color but leave it the way it is <laughs> uh, uh, in general, the abstract uh, will show uh, will be a summary of the paper, and uh, it, it it it's not only a, a summary. It's also a replacement to some extent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There, there's a lot of things that we shouldn't use in the abstract. Uh, it's not only formula. Well, in general, uh, information systems uh, does not... Uh, we usually do not use a lot of formula anyway. Uh, uh, well, unless it, we, we get more quantitative about uh, the research method. But still, uh, you're perfectly right. Uh, in, we have to see what is typical, right? We don't want to write a paper that someone looks at it and says, well, this is weird. Nobody does that. Why, why is this author going against the trends? Uh, we don't... We, uh, the, my argument here is we do not want the format uh, the, in which we write, we don't want that format to, to, um, uh, to, 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 to disturb the idea, right? Uh, so the format and, uh, needs to be something that people do not, do not even notice. And, and how, do people, how do we prevent people from noticing the format in which we're writing? Writing exactly the way they think that things should be. Right? So, no formula, uh, usually no more than one paragraph. It may, there, there are exceptions, but in general, you, you'll see that in most cases it's just one paragraph. No citations. Why don't we want citations in the abstract? We, we would have a, 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 a weird situation if, if we include a citation there, and when, and when I, I, I'm talking about a citation here, I mean uh, the name of an author 
and a date uh, and the year in which a, a specific uh, a piece of work was written. If I have an author and a, a, and a date there, I would have to have references to the abstract. It's weird, isn't it? Uh, so in general, we try to avoid including uh, uh, references in, a, in the abstract because we would need references to the abstract already. And, and that's, again, it's not usual. Uh, I, I would say it's, it's absolutely... Uh, I, I've never seen someone writing an abstract and then including references to the abstract. I have already seen people uh, uh, citing authors in the abstract, but I, I, I think that when you do that, you get into this awkward situation of not being able to provide a, 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 a full reference to that citation, and, and therefore we should avoid that. So basically, this is what we'll have in the abstract. Uh, wh why do I say that the, 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 the abstract is a replacement uh, to the a replacement to, the, to, to, to the, the, the paper that we are writing. Basically, because there will be people that will only read the abstract. And who are those people? Those that after reading the paper, the, the abstract, know, all right, I understand what this guy is doing, and this paper is not for me. One of the reasons why we write an abstract is to save people's time. Right? We don't want people to have to read the, the full paper to figure out that that paper was not for them. We want them to know that it's not for them. And also, uh, we, hope, we hope to write uh, an abstract that is also good <laughs> to convince people, wow, this paper is for me. I have to read the full thing because the abstract has already shown, uh, of course, with much less detail because the abstract is, is a summary, but it has already shown that the, 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 the research that is presented here has a lot to do with the work that I am doing myself and, and therefore I, I, I want to be better informed about the research that, that this author is, is, is performing, right? So notice, uh, it's a replacement in the sense that it has to be complete. The abstract, if, if someone reads the abstract, uh, one should, be, uh, should have enough information to either decide I don't want to read the full paper or I want to read the full paper because I need the details, I need the... I need the details, not, not, but, but, but I already understand what the paper is about. So the, the, the abstract should give the reader perfect understanding of what the paper is about, about the methodology that was used, and about the results to which the authors were able to, to get. Is that clear? Right? So uh, one, one thing that I want you to do, and mainly for those, for master students and for, for those who are starting their journey into a scientific investigation, I want you to, to, after we, we write this skeleton uh, of, uh, sorry, uh, uh, of, uh, um, uh, of a paper here, uh, I, I, I want you to start reading pa the, the papers you read in the future, try to see if they have this structure, and if they don't have the structure that we are discussing here, try to think if the structure they have is better or worse than the one that I'm presenting to you. Right? The one that I'm presenting to you is not anything that I came up with myself, right? Uh, I, in, in fact, I, as, as many other people who have been doing research for quite a while, uh, I'm sorry that I, there, there's this uh, WhatsApp popping up in front of your screen here, but anyway, uh, uh, w w what I want you to do, do, do in the, in the, well, the, the way I have, um, let's say, the, the way I have been uh, reading papers is always checking, well, this, this guy's, there, there's something about the structure in this paper that is better than the way that I used to write. So I will use it because it helps me with reporting the results of the science I'm trying to, 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 to build here. Right? We have to think of uh, an academic paper as a report. I know it's a bit boring, right, to, to think of... Uh, uh, we, we, maybe if, if you want to, if one day you dream to write literature, writing uh, an academic paper is writing a report. It is even bureaucratic in the sense that you have already done your research. Now what you're doing is communicating uh, the results and communicating the process uh, that you used in your research to other um, uh, colleagues in your field. So we have to do that in a way that it's simple for them to understand. And the simplest it gets, the more you you, you work uh, on, on a, a, in a format that is very similar to what other people already do. So again, what I'm showing you, uh, you here, and notice that Antonio is already contributing, and Donna is contributing, and I hope everyone else contributes to, to building our, this skeleton of a, a paper here. You will see that this is not our invention. This is how our area 
um, usually uh, works with with papers that are well, this is the typical way of writing papers in in in, in our field and I, I can assure you in many other fields at least in applied school, in applied uh, sciences because of course you will see that the the, the, the design here is for uh, a theoretical uh, a theoretical uh, uh, practical or a theor a theoretical practical paper or a theoretical empirical paper uh, a paper in which you have some theory and the, and then you have some you go to the field you go to you you get into the real world to collect data and to compare and contrast with uh, the with the 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 the, the, the previous uh, the extant literature that was available all right uh, okay so uh, uh, we already have, uh, and uh, is the abstract something we write at the beginning? No, it's 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 like the title. Uh, you can only write the abstract that is a summary after you have something to summarize, right? So you're not going to write the abstract straight away. That doesn't mean that you cannot start drafting uh, an abstract to help you, uh, at least uh, as a let's say guideline to where you want to go with your paper. So you may. Uh, from the beginning, you may already sort of have a, a, a good understanding of what your objective is, so you place your objective there to make sure that you don't deviate from it. Uh, but uh, but I can tell you that many times we do deviate simply because when we get to our results, our results sometimes do not explain uh, or, or, or they're not good to, to deal with the problem that we had at the beginning. Sometimes we have to retell the story because it's a different story. Sometimes that happens. Uh, uh, and I, I don't want you to, to have the feeling that we are faking science. No. Sometimes you intended to do some research and during the, the uh, I mean, you plan to do something and, uh, and as time goes by, uh, you end up doing something differently because uh, you're not alone in the universe. There are other forces that are, 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 are influencing the way you go with your, with your work. So we, we, and, and when that happens and when we end up doing something different to what we had originally planned, uh, one way that we can do, go with our research is to review what we have already done and rearrange it uh, so that we, we adapt things to the new problem that we are now uh, uh, solving somehow. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, well, keywords. Uh, keywords. Uh, what, what are the keywords? Keywords are basically uh, just a few. Sure. Sure. Uh, Anthony. Why, why, why in the title of the author? Don't put uh, the ORCID or identifier. Uh, uh, normally, in, the, in, the, in this context, mm -hmm. the university uh, don't use uh, the ORCID. Or you mean here at, at here at the top? Yeah. At the example, for example, Alexander Rosset, Sir Graham. Uh, it, dep it depends. This is this is this is a uh, uh, AMSIS template. AMSIS, uh, for example, it will ask the author here uh, the you know your affiliation, the university, and your email. Where is the ORCID? Where is the ORCID? The, the, it doesn't include ORCID here, but this is just no. notice. This is just AMSIS template. Okay, right. okay this is AMSIS template. AMSIS uh, for, for 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 this conference, the Americas Conference on Information Systems. What they want in the paper is the name of the author. Uh, the the university or the affiliation university or uh, research institute or whatever and email at least that's that's how it is for now right uh, maybe in the future uh, they change that I, I would say that this this surely was a format that they already had much before or see or any other of these uh, ways of uh, um, providing uh, others with information about ourselves right um, but th th this is again. Uh, this is why I didn't even uh, mention uh, the way this is done. This is simply the, the templates that they have for, for this con specific conference. Okay. All right. Uh, keywords. Uh, keywords. Uh, 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 in the past, they were very important because uh, the database we had. In fact, the, the, the database many many times relied on manual. You know, uh, going to a library and checking um, physical files uh, that were that had being organized based on sometimes they were based on uh, uh, based on, on the title of of of, uh, of the work or the the author and sometimes they were also they, they were based on keywords i think that keywords my, my impression is that keywords are getting less important uh because now we have all these uh, uh ways of electronically uh finding out uh, uh papers that are not necessarily based on on 
on keywords. They're based on any content that you have. So for example, if we write a, it would be, still be a keyword, but if we choose a keyword and include in, in Google Scholar, right, if we, it's, it's just a, 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 an expression that we use to select papers, it will already show us uh, a lot of papers that have that content, regardless of it being mentioned here as keywords. But it's still there, uh, and, and, and at least it provides us with, uh, let's say, with some expressions that, that connect to that paper that, that are provided to us by the author. So, of course, when, when Google finds out that a paper that I wrote uh, is, on, on, is, is a paper on crowdsourcing, for example, right? It, uh, it finds it because it, it simply, simply because the word crowdsourcing was available there uh, in, in, in the document. Uh, but it's, if I write here that my, my, let's say that one of my keywords is uh, crowdsourcing, uh, then that, that also gives uh, the reader uh, an idea that this is an important expression for me, right, for the author. So keywords are important, we, uh, are still important, they're less important than in the past, uh, but we usually have here three to five keywords. Uh, sometimes, uh, I don't know, that, that may vary, uh, but, but usually uh, we're still required to provide some keywords. And again, when do we write the keywords? At the beginning, not... Not necessarily. Uh, it could have been. You, you could write those keywords only after you finish your work, because sometimes the keywords may refer to the findings, and you 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 didn't have the findings before you started the work or at the beginning of the work, right? So, again, one thing that you should uh, understand about writing a report, as it is any academic uh, a paper, is that it's not written in a linear, in a progressive, top-down manner. Manner. You don't start at the first line, you don't start by the title, then you write the abstract, then you write the keywords, then you write the int introduction, and so on and so forth. Uh, I, I think it wasn't done uh, that way even before the word processor. But after we started using electronic word processor, something like Word or, or any, uh, any, any, any technological tool that allows us to write in whatever part of the document at, at whatever time, uh, uh, we definitely don't write it top down, right? We, we sometimes we start writing uh, uh, some part of the paper that is that, that 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 is much closer to the conclusion before we have before we have written the introduction. In fact, I find that the introduction. If you ask me what is the last part of a paper that you write, I, in my case, the the last part that I write is the introduction, because the reason for the introduction is to uh, well. Someone who reads the introduction has already read the abstract, probably, right? And uh, and and that person was partially convinced that they have to read the the, the full paper because the abstract already showed uh, the main well the, what the objective was or the method was and, and your main uh, main findings. But the introduction is where you will provide context to your research relevance. Right? Alexander, yeah. Maybe, Antonio, maybe you could include uh, something about the state of the art in the introduction, uh, but not necessarily. Uh, uh, or at least you will uh, you, you deal with the state of the art in detail in a later on, I would say. At least uh, uh, what, what you have to do is you have to provide the, the, the reader with, uh, with, with the context of your... You, uh, the, the introduction is where you tell uh, the reader why your, your research is important. So there is there's some context, there's context provided, there is some relevance. Uh, basically, again, the, the, notice that whoever is reading your, your introduction is already more, let's say, interested in your paper than when they, they had simply read the, the title and the abstract, right? The abstract has already convinced them, yeah, this is something that I have to read. But the introduction uh, is is where you will have to to, to, to tell the people, look, uh, okay, you, you you've decided you have already read 15 lines of uh, uh, of an abstract. Now you are deciding if you're going to read 15 pages of a paper, and uh, and in in, the, in this introduction, I will try to show you that this is important, and and, and you will make it important, showing uh, the the reader uh, that this. Um, the work that you're you're doing is important for whatever reason, right? Uh, context uh, is important because, well, context provides uh, uh, 
practical and theoretical um, reason for the paper. Uh, so in, in general, uh, uh, the, the introduction is going to prepare the reader to get smoothly into, into the, the theme of your work, right? Uh, of course, we are, we are, uh, we are interested in, in showing in introduction why the, the paper is relevant. And, and then maybe when, when Antonio asked me about the, the state of the art, sometimes we will have already to say something about the state of the art to show that this paper is relevant because it's going beyond somehow. Right? Uh, previous uh, authors have gone so far, and the work that I'm proposing now intends to go a little further. So, of course, we, can't, we cannot do that. We cannot talk about the re relevance without somehow showing what others have already done. Right? So, uh, maybe in, 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 in expressing uh, the relevance here is uh, showing uh, why uh, what is being proposed. Uh, is uh, interesting research. Okay, so in general, what we do in the introduction, and again, I, I, in my case, and each one has a different style, but uh, what I usually do is this is the last, the last part that I write, at least write uh, in, in the way of, of having it completely and well shaped, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean that I, I, I don't know what I want to do from the beginning, right? So the introduction is where probably one thing that I have to sh do in the introduction, I have to present uh, the objective of the paper. Uh, sometimes uh, some, th there are areas and there are, there are people that instead of, uh, of presenting the objective, they, they present uh, or the research, uh, how do you call it? The research, uh, research. Um, um, uh, question, it's right? It's important for for the researchers and reviewers. And well, not all, of course. We don't write for the reviewers. We write for the readers. But uh, of course, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, uh, uh, we 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 you know who who's going to read our paper. You know who do we want to read our uh, our paper? The readers. Uh, you know the community in general. But of course. Of course, the first ones that will read our paper are the reviewers. I usually call them, and I, I think I've already referred to them as the gatekeepers. It's almost like you want to get into a party. The party seems to be really loud and everyone seems to be happy inside. You want to get into the party and there is this gatekeeper at the, the entrance saying, no, you're not allowed in, right? So that's the reviewer. Uh, so the reviewer is your first reader. But uh, of course, you want to please the reviewer so that he allow he or she allows you into the party. But after that, you want to 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 I mean, you want you, you want your actual readers to to enjoy uh, your your work. So uh, they're they're readers in different stages, right? The the let's say the gatekeepers are there to decide if other people are going to read your work or not. Uh, so it's very important that you please the reviewers. But after the uh, after you please the reviewers, of course you're you, you will only be happy if if the readers uh, enjoy what they're reading. Okay, uh, let me just try and do something here, just to avoid. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if the, oh this is this is getting a little messy here. Let's see. Give me just one second to. It's just that people are showing things here. And, uh, let me just adjust something. Uh, just that uh, there are a lot of people that are trying to send me a WhatsApp message for whatever reason, and, and, and they're popping in your screen. I just want to fix that <laughs> and prevent that from happening. Uh, what do I have to do here? Maybe just come to this and let's see if I can organize this. All right. OK. Um, oh, this is just one second. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is also strange here. Let me see what I have to do. Excuse me, sorry. Sorry for these guys. Oh, this Yeah, I think it will work. <laughs> it's just that I wanted to prevent uh, uh, you, 
you from from getting all the 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 noise of people just sending it. Okay, all right. So we have here uh, uh, the, the in, in the introduction. I think that that's what we usually have. I don't know if anyone has other ideas or things that we show in the introduction. Come on, help me. It's, uh, th this has to be a, a, a again uh, a, a template like this uh, is a a how they say it's a social construction, right? It's uh, basically you, you're, you're, some of you are also reviewers. Uh, some of, of one, or many of you will become reviewers in the future, so uh, it's important that we 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 get to a, to something that pleases everyone. Go on, Patricia. Ah, okay. Yeah, the, exactly. Exactly. What, 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 what Patricia is asking is what we're doing here. Basically, what we're, we're doing is we're writing a, a template. Uh, well, again, we already had the template in terms of uh, how the, the paper should look. But now what we're trying to include here is what is important in each session of a paper. Right. And again, uh, when I say that this is a social construction is there's no single way of doing it. And don't understand that's what, what we're doing here. All papers that you, you will see in information systems are going to be like that. Uh, this is what usually happens. Uh, and again, when I say that we, we should try to write papers that are similar to what usually happens, because then the, the reader is not going to be thinking, why is this author here trying to do things all in a different fashion? Right? We prefer that they, they already know, well, in the introduction, I, I expect to find, uh, well, the author will try to provide a context for the research he or she is doing. Uh, then the author will convince me that this is important research so that it's relevant. Uh, it's usually what we call this is the, uh, this here would be the justification of the research. Uh, so it shows the importance. Sometimes people even give some uh, motivation that is motivation is more private, more, more intimate. Uh, uh, in general, we in information systems, we still tend to be a little how would I say, a little positivistic. Uh, and we, we, prefer that the, we, we prefer to have justifications than motivations, in the sense that we prefer... Uh, justification is something that shows that something would be important for everyone. Uh, the motivation would be the reasons why we ourselves think that uh, a topic is important, right? It's, it's more personal, and therefore, um, usually it's, it's, it's not there. But sometimes there are people, mainly for those people that are doing some more phenomenological research that are more into qualitative methods, they may, additionally to providing some justification that is the importance to the field, that is the importance to, to everyone, they also provide some motivation that is the reason why they are so interested in that research. Right? Uh, but that, that way, we, we definitely, the introduction is the place to show the object, to write down what the objective of the paper is. Right? Uh, usually that's that's where it appears and it, it usually appears pretty close to the end of the introduction many times it's the one before the last paragraph right why one before the last well because many people include uh, the last paragraph uh, many times includes the structure of the remaining of the paper. Uh, I find this a little bureaucratic, right? But it happens often and and, uh, and uh, remainder of the paper. Oh, anyway, the, the, the oh, I'll just include the uh, structure of the paper. So what I mean here is that uh, sometimes in the, the last paragraph of the, the introduction, you're going to say, well, okay, so after this introduction, you will find a session that will discuss the literature review. Then you have a session that will deal with the methodology. Then you will uh, have uh, another session that will provide, uh, well, well, that will show the analysis of the results and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, I find it a little bureaucratic. But it's very usual that it happens like that. And again, I want you to, after you see this, you start reading papers and checking uh, if they match our template here. 
uh, and, and the more you see other papers that match our templates, the more you will be convinced that this is a good template for the papers you write. Okay. All right. So uh, that's that's for the, the introduction. After the introduction, what do we usually have? Remember, we're talking about a theoretical empirical paper, a theoretical practical paper, uh, a paper that has that will bring some theory, and then we'll have some. You, you'll go to the field and do something practical, and then you will compare the results of your practical work with whatever uh, you could expect from from theory. So. Based on that, uh, uh, and considering that this is the kind of uh, paper that we're talking about, we're not talking about the essay. Remember, we, we talked about the essay a couple of weeks ago, and I told you that you don't want to write essays right now, because essays are, are, are worth for uh, who writes them. Uh, uh, essays are only considered uh, a good uh, piece of, uh, of, of work or, or, and, and something that deserves to be read by other people, when people know already who the author is. So it usually... Uh, um, we usually expect that essays, or we usually expect essays to be written by people who are senior in their areas, and therefore we already think that their contribution is not necessarily uh, based on the research that they are currently doing, but the experience that they accumulated over over years of study. And, and right, that's good for essays, but we're not talking about essays here. So if we're not talking about essays, if we're talking about uh, 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 theoretical empirical research, let's think about the sessions that are usually there. Usually we have a sec second session here. That is uh, the theoretical theoretical background, or sometimes uh, people do a literature review. Review. What is the difference between uh, having a session of theoretical background or a literature review? When when, will, when would I choose to write? A theoretical background session, and when would I choose to write a, a literature review? Any any ideas? Any insights? Basically, what I would uh, 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 I would suggest is if you're if you're right if you're writing a very posit positivistic work, right, uh, and uh, in, in positivistic in the sense that you believe that everyone who deals with, deals with uh, with that specific uh, research problem will see things the same way uh, or in better in better words if you th if you assume that reality is only one then you may possibly write a literature review uh, because you think that whoever is involved with the topic will see things the same way you do uh, theoretical backgrounds uh, is more necessary when you think that to see things in a particular way you need to see them from a particular angle. See, it's a, we, uh, I, I, I argue that we in information systems tend to be, in general, we are very positivistic in the sense that we, we don't see that different people seeing a problem from different angle, from a different angle, will see a different world. But that, that happens in a lot of applied sciences. For example, uh, if you have a, let's say, a a new, uh, uh, new liberal uh, economist talking to a another economist, but who has a Marxist background, they will not be able to get to the same understanding of a problem because each one of them sees the world from a completely different angle. Can you understand that? For example, uh, if you're analyzing um, a a problem from a uh, a Marxist uh, point of view, you are going. To, you are already trying to figure out uh, how, let's say, uh, the the powers of uh, well, the, the powerful people and the laborers. How are they confronting each other? Or I don't know. I, it, there, there is already some 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 perspective uh, uh, to to that problem that is not necessarily everyone's perspective. Does that make sense to you? Maybe it will f for 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 those who are who are very let's say for those who are uh, very um, Computer science people, this will probably not make much sense because you think, is that is it possible for different people to see the world differently? Uh, how can it be? Uh, reality is just once. Uh, it's just one. But that's not the case. Uh, reality, or, or at least there's, uh, we can argue that reality will be perceived differently by people that have different backgrounds, that have different views of the world. And this is uh, this is not subtle. This is this is this is a huge difference. If you're writing. Uh, 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 a paper and you believe that depending on people's 
take or depending on people's view of the world, they will see the reality differently, you're probably going to deal with a theoretical background. Uh, otherwise, if you think that whatever you're doing is crystal clear, that there is no way people will dispute reality and that everyone will see things the same way, it's just a matter of reviewing the, well, providing this, as Antonio mentioned before, the state of the arts, right? Where have we come so far? So well, you will... Of ideas of different authors exactly. about the research. But, but notice, it's, uh, uh, the, 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 it's, it's not comparing authors trying to show where they, they, they differ because they do not have, there's no, there's no lack of, 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 of agreement. Uh, they simply, some of them went so far and the others started from there and went ahead. Right? Uh, when, when we're thinking about more positivistic uh, research, it happens in a way that there is no dispute. Sarah, do you, have, do you want to make any comments or? No? Well, it's just that she opened her. No, she just opened her camera. I thought she she wanted to, had a question. Feel free to open your mics or your camera whenever you 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 wish. Right. Uh, all right. So if if this is uh, uh, this has to be clear, uh, you have to decide because you're if you you cannot choose the wrong words here. If you if you if you decide that you're doing a theoretical backgrounds, then it's going to be theoretical backgrounds. It's different to literature review. Okay, you have to. That, that, that's, that's something important. Uh, it's different things. Alexander, yeah. Me, sure. Uh, uh, use the term literary works as equivalent to the literature review? Um, to, some, to some extent, uh, yeah. Related works, for example, is the same or do you yeah. to the Yeah. I, I would say that related work, uh, oh, sorry. Related work is, let me, let me do it like this, right? Related work probably is, is, is closer to, to literature review because related work again means that you, you, uh, you're, you're not disputing uh, views of the world you're not uh, uh, claiming that different people will see that problem as a different problem it's simply related work is other people have already done this and you're basically saying I'm not going to repeat what they, they're doing because I'm not reinventing the wheel right I don't want to reinvent the wheel so I will not be repeating what others have already done but at the same time, it's important to tell you where they, what have they, they have already do, uh, done, so that I can go a little further. Okay, all right. I, I don't have much to tell you about what you are going to write in this session because this is going to be basically your. This this is where you put your authors to talk to one another. Basically, uh, here is build. Oh, sorry, let me just change the this. One. This should be normal style. Normal style. Oh, oh, hang on. Sorry, let me just fix this. Give me a second. Yeah. Um, uh, put, I don't know why this is uh, this is a difference. Okay, put your authors to talk to one another. I usually uh, say that. Uh, this second chapter, let, let's, let's even number this, considering that this is a report, let's number things. Oh, this, this is a little slow here, but I, I could even number. I, I don't think that this, for this template here, for the AMSIS template, they're not numbered. But I want to, to say that this is session one. Uh, and then a, a second session would be, second part of the paper would be uh, the theoretical background or the literature review dash related work dash what else uh, uh um state state of the arts okay um uh, and and this is a place where you 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 will have a different your different authors will show you what your different authors uh have done how far they they have gone if it's a theoretical background you may even put your, your authors to fight against each other and, and, and to show at the end that you are going to see the world through a specific uh, angle or view. Uh, but anyway, the idea here, is this is a session. This session two is a session where you usually don't have any, uh, any content that was generated by yourself. Right? Okay, so this is uh, no content generated directly by the author. All ideas belong to the cited authors. 
Uh, what, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, this is not a session where, where you're going to start presenting any results of your own work. In general, I think that this is a session where you will be presenting uh, uh, the tools you will use to analyze data later on. Later, oh, what, what have I done here? Okay, later on. Uh, present the tools. When I say you will present the tools, I mean you will uh, present your authors, the authors or the ideas that you, you either try to um, prove right or wrong with the data that you collect in the field later on, right? Uh, uh, why do I say uh, presenting tools here? Because it's important. And one thing that we see sometimes in papers, uh, in poor, poor papers or papers that are not so well built, is that there is some some discussion in this in the second session here, in the session on, on, on literature review, for example, that does not appear later on. So what I, I claim is that all the authors that you call the reader's attention in this second part of the paper should be rescued later on when you are analyzing your data. Okay? So uh, all papers mentioned, sorry, all, all I'll say uh, all, all authors, but, but it could be paper, all authors dash papers mentioned here should be rescued uh, in the analysis session, which I'll, I'll call here session four. We'll get to session four and then you'll understand that. But basically, you know, you, you write things here and then later on you go back and see and say, see, these results that I got from the fields, they, they either support what the theory already said about this or the, 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 the new evidence that I have uh, shows that what those authors had said uh, is not necessarily as general as they expected because we have found out a situation here where uh, they don't they, their ideas do not apply. Uh, what, uh, I was saying that sometimes you have some uh, poorer papers that discuss things in the literature review that are never rescued later on. And then the reader says, why, was, why did the author perform that discussion in, in, in the, the theoretical session? Uh, if that was not used for anything later on. It's very typical also in, in theses or dissertations. I mean, the, of course, when the student is, is reviewing a, a lot of material for their work, they find a lot of interesting things and, and they want to write about all those interesting things. But what are the interesting things that they found when they were reviewing other, other authors' uh, work that is important to their own work? If it's not important, take it away. Leave it, use, use it somewhere else, but don't use in that paper or don't use in your, your, in your dissertation or thesis because it will be there uh, left alone without, let's say, without talking, without, without establishing a conversation with the, with, the, with the empirical data later on. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, uh, you, you're, you're very quiet today and I, I want this to be as, as participative as possible because I want this to be, I, I want you to be convinced that this is, the, is a good way to go with, with the, let's say, at least with this model. Anyone else has any any ideas here? All right, so uh, uh, this is session two. Then we usually have a third session that is uh, the method. Oh no, so the, what, what's this? this? Is I don't know what I'm doing here. Let me just copy this, sorry. I'll copy these guys here because I want to have the same styles and hopefully it will work. So session three here uh, is going to be uh, the methodological procedures. Okay. Uh, and, and, and here it's going to be data Well, anyway, uh, so the methodological procedures, or which we will call here session three, again, in the template that they use for AMSIS, they're not numbered, but I want to have them numbered here simply because uh, I want to show you one thing at, at the end that is 
a paper has a, a certain number of sessions, right? So wh what do we have in the methodological procedures? What do we need to include in the session? Well, if I go back there to session one, where I had uh, the where I presented the objective of the paper, this is what I want to do, right? And then when I, I come to the, the methodological procedures, this is the how. How am I going to do it? Yeah, uh, go on, Flavio. I think uh, your research. The, the, re the research methodology, yeah. Uh, uh, basically, how are you going to solve your research problem? Okay, or how are you going, going to get to your objective? Uh, so the methodological procedure is uh, very important for researchers in the field. And, and remember, your readers are going to be researchers, right? We're talking about a community of researchers. So the methodology is important because many times people get to very interesting conclusions, but they do not use the scientific methods to get to those conclusions. And therefore, their conclusions are not, cannot be accepted uh, scientifically. Uh, for example, um, well, I don't know, my, my, my grandmother, who was not a scientist, she was a very wise woman, but not a scientist, had a lot of theories about things that we could or could not do. For example, she, she kept, uh, I remember the one thing that she said that we, we should not get, uh, when we, we went to the beach, we could not get, uh, we, we could not go and swim after having eaten watermelon. That was uh, something that, I don't know, her parents had told her or, and, and so on. It, it was some sort of wisdom, but it was not scientific wisdom. Uh, and of course, we as scientific children uh, already challenged my grandmother and said, what is the reason for that? She, she, as she could not explain us what the reason was, uh, we, do not, we did not take that uh, advice from her seriously simply because we were scientific kids <laughs> we were born in the in the second half of the 20th century uh, when uh, kids already had in their dna that we needed a reason and we needed a reason that we agreed with that we thought to be reasonable so the methodological procedure is going to be something that your readers will find a reasonable way of achieving your results so many times students are too concerned about saying, do I have to have a lot of references to, 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 to the methodology? For example, uh, I decided I'm, that I'm using, let's say, the, uh, interviews as uh, the, let's say, the, the procedure to get to know what, uh, I don't know, uh, people in the industry think about a specific uh, topic. Uh, should I use uh, interviews or should I use a survey? A survey meaning a uh, questionnaire. And I usually tell them it depends on the question. It depends on your problem. If your problem, for example, uh, I, I mean, I, 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 can, I can assure you that a, a, that a questionnaire can be very effective to reach some, some, sort, some, some types of results and that, an inter that, or that interviews can be very good to solve other problems. But they're not good for the same problems. For example, uh, if, if, if you're doing, what you're doing is a case study and you're studying just one case of one organization, right? And uh, you intend to get the information you need to, to you know, to, to do your analysis from five or six people, important, important decision makers in that organization, for example, the CIO, depending on, it doesn't matter what your problem, uh, research problem was, but let's say that you wanted to get the, the CIO's perspective and you want to get, uh, uh, I don't know, the, the you know, people that, uh, that are working in a, in a, in a team, um, let's say, the, the development team uh, perspective, and then you're going to interview some two or three people from the development team, and then you are also going to interview the president of the, the organization because you want to know you know what use the the ceo makes of uh, of ideas that are developed in the in, in the computer department uh, in, the, in the, the it departments and then i ask you how many people are you uh, how many people do you think you have to deal with to get to conclude about your topic 
And then the, the, the researcher tells me, well, I think with maybe with seven, eight, ten interviews, uh, that will be okay. And I say, well, uh, ten, ten, ten or, or, or you know, well, talking to ten people will be okay. I'll, I'll say, well, interviews seem a better way than a questionnaire in that case. Because it's not many people and you probably want to get inf uh, detailed information. You want to, to, to really get to talk to these people and, and have some deep conversations with them. Probably not very structured because uh, you you want them to tell you things that you didn't even expect. So you're you're doing some exploratory research that you you believe that uh, simply by talking to them you will get some interesting answers to maybe to questions you were not even able to formulate well. So I'd say interviews seem better because if you can't even if you don't even know exactly what you're going to ask, it's uh, it's good that you find a way that you can interact with these people more deeply, right? And an in, interview uh, provides you with an, uh, with an opportunity to 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 interact more deeply than a questionnaire with sad questions. On the other hand, if you, if you if you if you if your question if the thing that you're studying uh, if your objective of study requires or you think that you you want to talk to talk to hundreds of people, I would say, well, it's even unfeasible to to do hundreds of interviews. Uh, mainly if you're thinking that each interview will take an hour or so, you're not going to spend two or three hundred hours interviewing people. You'll never be able to finish your research if you do that. But if your objective requires the the ideas or, or the impressions of a lot of people, maybe then you will decide on using a questionnaire uh, and you already have a set of predetermined questions, you will ask the same questions through a questionnaire to everyone, and uh, and then you will just you, you you will work on a more quantitative way in the, in analyzing those data. Uh, the, that data. Can you? Uh, th th does that make sense to you? That depending on the, the the problem and depending on how you want to deal with that problem, uh, you will choose the right methodological tools. Okay, and you don't have to to be um, too concerned. Uh, about explaining what a questionnaire is or what an interview is. Uh, I mean, if we ask a 10-year-old kid what an interview is, they know. If you ask them what a questionnaire is, they know. So you don't need a lot of uh, uh, references that you can cite to tell uh, uh, your reader that a questionnaire is a set of pre-programmed pre or pre-established pre questions. It's, it's silly to, you know, what you have to, to do in your methodological procedure in this, in this uh, chapter is to convince uh, or to show your reader that the method that you chose is the most suitable method, or at least that it is a, a suitable method to solve the problem that you're you, you, that you're trying to solve. Right? Uh, does that make sense to you? Again, you're too quiet today. <laughs> is that all right? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, and then uh, what we, we, we do next, uh, so, so, so notice here in this chapter, in the chapter 3, you're only going to show uh, the, the, the tools or, or the way you use to solve that problem. And then, uh, yeah, go on, Flavio. Sure. Uh, I think in that session, we have to show how, how data is processed. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, you you can you, you have to show how data is collected. Okay, so there's a, a there's a lot of hows here. For example, how okay, so how data is collected, how data is uh, processed, how data is organized. Uh, I, I mean, there's again, it's it's a simple. It's a simple session where you have to convince your reader that what you're doing is the, the right thing to do to achieve the results that you want to achieve. Okay? All right. Oh, sorry. Uh, and then uh, we have another item that is analysis of the data. In this, in, uh, and, and I don't know, you, you, usually you, it could be a discussion of the results. Many people have different names for and and obtained results. Only only discussion. This just simply discussion, yeah. Uh, exactly. It's so only discussion. You you I mean the names of the sessions uh, don't matter much. Of course, it's important that people by the name that you yeah, let's let's just yeah, just 
Hope yeah. That's also okay. Uh, how? Yeah, that, that's also. Um, uh, I mean, whatever detail you have on the, the the methodological procedures, that will convince the the reader that your research was was well done, right? Uh, uh, so when, of course, if you're if you're if you're, if you're discussing in, if in 2022, you are discussing data that you collected in in 1980. Uh, people will say, aren't you a little late? Unless you're, you're, you're you may, may notice that sometimes what you, you, you could be doing is you're comparing the results of data that were collected in 1980 with data that were collect, collected some 40 years later, and you're trying to show that there is a difference between. So uh, the when here is part of the how. Okay, uh, it, it, it may be a little. Uh, so when is not important because well not too important because we usually assume that when was yesterday right you're you're you're, you're talking about research that you're doing now but of course there are, there are situations and and, and 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 notice that when is part of the how for example we have uh uh cross-sectional research versus longitudinal what is the difference between a cross cross sectional or uh, uh, longitudinal research. What is cross sectional? Cross sectional is is you. I mean, it's something that you're doing right now. You're 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 taking this moment in time. And a longitudinal research is one that you you believe that as time goes by, the phenomenon you're studying is changing. And in fact, what you're trying to do is to try to figure out how time affects. Uh, the phenomenon that you're researching, right? But notice, uh, uh, this this relates to a uh, somehow to a when, right? Uh, but notice that it's a when that is important to us because it's part of the how, right? <laughs> uh, I hope I'm not making this uh, more confusing than it needs to be. Uh, so uh, cross-sectional research is uh, I, I choose a, a period, uh, a point in time, and that's and data is collected at that time, right? Uh, and uh, longitudinal research, I choose, I, 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 I assume that the, the phenomenon that I'm studying changes over time, and I'm trying to analyze that by collecting data in different moments in time and contrasting whatever I, I get. Right? Okay, uh, so what we do in the analysis? Analyze the data, the, the Fields data. I don't know why this is happening. It's I suppose we have this. This should be normal style, but it's okay. Uh, analyze the fields data and contrast contrast the results with uh, what one could expect based on the literature. Based on the literature, based on the, on, 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 it could be on the, the your reference uh, contrast. Okay. And notice this is this is why it's important that uh, and, and it's it's something that you have to do is when you get to to this to write this session four, you go back to your literature review. You see what your authors were saying there, then you go to your 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 to your data, uh, and you see how your data show a different reality to what the literature review uh, uh, was shown. And in this case, this is what I say, this, this is a session, this is actually a session where uh, you exercise a little more authorship. Because remember, the session, session two was a session that belongs to the authors you were referring, right? You're not debating. In session two, you're not de debating your ideas against the ideas of, of the authors you are citing. It's session two is only about the cited authors, right? You have nothing to say there. Session four, now you think that you have something you can say, right? Wrong. You don't say anything, uh, at least in a more positivistic uh, view. Your data say something. So again, you're not the author of ses session four. Session four is where you're going to contrast the results of uh, your field uh, uh, research. So it's, it's your field, it's the data from the field being contrasted 
uh, with your authors. So again, there's no authorship for you here. Uh, see, in fact, in a more positivistic uh, research approach, the author is never really the author, uh, or the, the, what the author uh, does, the author writes. Have you seen that we usually write in the, I don't, don't know if we call it in the third person or in an impersonal way. We usually don't say, uh, I did this or I did that. Uh, you usually say, this was done, right? Uh, and the, why do you do that? It's simply because in, in, in the, the positivistic, uh, um, let's say, stream of, of research, usually uh, we don't think that, that the, author, uh, the, the author matters that much. Whoever were doing that research, trying to, to, to solve that specific problem, using that specific methodology, should reach the same results. Right? So it's not dependable on the author, and that's why the author tries to minimize his or her position uh, and, and, and doesn't usually say what I did. Uh, it's not, uh, I mean, some, uh, we see some, some journals and some conferences that accept papers written in the first uh, person. But in general, they are not positivistic papers. When that happens, it's again, it's a more, uh, uh, it's a paper that already acknowledges that the author, or let's say the, the, re the researcher, plays a role in the analysis and, the, and the, that the analysis the, the researcher is able to, to perform is dependent on that specific researcher. I mean, I, I know that that's something that we all acknowledge, but when we do positivistic research, we sort of minimize that and we try to hide behind uh, our authors presented in chapter two and, uh, uh, and our data that are now contrasted with the opinions of our authors in chapter four. In fact, the positivistic researcher never provides any uh, any results that he, he or she says well this is my opinion there's no there's no space for opinion in a in, in a positivistic uh, uh, research project because it's either what others have already found out through their own research or what you found out through your research but again it's your data it's not you so uh, you don't have much uh, of a saying there I don't know if that's uh, too depressing for, for, for you. Uh, of course, we all want to make a difference in the world, but in the posit positivistic perspective, uh, in general, um, if, if our research was developed by someone else, uh, this other person should get to, to exactly the same results. And this is why the author sort of hides behind uh, his, his data and his, and his own references. Okay. Does that make sense? Again, I know that some of you are, uh, are, are, are not, if you're, if you're not, if you're doing some phenomen, phenomenological research, and there is a lot of room for that in, in information systems, uh, if you're doing some research that is more qualitative and, 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 and less dependent, or, 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 or let's say even more dependent on the, the author, uh, uh, know that you still have room to, to, to use exactly the same model, of course, then you, you don't have to be so strict about writing on, on, on a, in, in a impersonal in way, uh, then you, you you probably even try to emphasize the fact that you got to those perceptions because of your own uh, uh, trajectory, because of your own way of seeing the world and so on and so forth. Right? It's a, it's a different, uh, let's say, um, scientific uh, perspective. All right, and then, uh, okay, so if, if this was uh, uh, the analysis, then we have a fifth uh, chapter that is going to be the conclusion. Uh, some people write conclusions. I personally don't like it. I think that there's all, uh, one reason why we should uh, do it in, in the singular. First, well, if we think that this uh, section here is the conclusion of the work, it's, it's a last session, then it's, 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 it's singular, right? And uh, even if we think that this is a session where we will present our conclusions, then I would say, well, but wasn't it a single objective that you had? In general, we don't have a set of 10 objectives, right? We have one objective at the beginning, and I have to conclude about that one single objective. So I personally prefer a conclusion and not conclusions. But this is Alex here. This is, you know, it depends on, the, and, and, and I see a lot of uh, papers and, and theses where uh, this is in the plural and other people don't find any problem with it. In fact, I don't find a problem itself, uh, myself. I just, I don't do it. I usually, well, I usually think that's what we do have here. Well, 
I said, I don't do it. I don't know if I do it. Uh, I may have done it several times in the past. Of course, we, we don't usually write uh, alone. We many times write with colleagues. Uh, we write with, um, with our students. Uh, and, uh, and mainly in those cases, if, if, it, if it's something that I'm writing on my own, I will, let's say, probably not write in the, in the plural. Uh, if I write with others, it will depend on, on what other people think as well. Uh, some people also like to have a session that they call final considerations. I don't, I, I've done it a lot. I don't, I don't usually, I don't like it. I've done it in the past, mainly when, uh, when I had co-authors. I don't like the idea of writing simply some final considerations because it seems to me that I'm not committing to, to the results, right? You know, I have to, if I had an objective, I have to have an, a conclusion about that objective. And final consideration seems that I'm a little, to me, my, my, my perception is that I feel a little looser with respect to it, and it seems that I can uh, uh, be lighter than, uh, uh, than I would like to with respect to the conclusion. So basically, the conclusion, uh, what, what, what should we do here in this uh, f uh, last uh, session? Well, we should uh, conclude about the objective. objective of the paper. Uh, what else? Usually what, what people do in this session, they also uh, write about future uh, research possibilities. And uh, I always think, why, why should we write about future research possibilities or future research? For two reasons. Either because we want to reserve uh, that room for ourselves and say, and, and then it's important to say very clearly that, well, you know, the, 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 this group of researchers or the, the authors uh, intend to continue the research doing this or that be, and, and showing why that's important, why, why that's relevant. Or in other cases, you're going to say, well, this is as far as I could go. I, I'm tired of the, the topic. Uh, I'm retiring or whatever. But, but I think that others could go on from here. Uh, and and in, in, in both situations, I think it's important that we have some consideration about future research possibilities, simply because as we were dealing with that topic for much longer than we expected our readers have, uh, we do have some experience that, we, that, that will be good to share with others, uh, telling them where, they, where, 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 it's, where there are paved roads ahead, where, where it's easier to go, uh, where it's more promising to go, and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, Alex, yeah, go on, Donna. Uh, Alex, yep. I, I would say so. I would say also when I did the, 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 the review and I found things that I couldn't focus on in this paper, mm -hmm. I could also say um, in future works. Yep. Uh huh. Um, sure, sure, sure. So, 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 so it could also be as it could also be. We, we could not go any further than this. We, we, this is where we, we, we could get to. But there is a lot of uh, interesting things to be done yet and, and, and things that we did not have the breath, let's say, to do. Uh, uh, I mean, we have to acknowledge that we, we, can only do, we, we can only go so far. But others will be able to start from where we stopped. So this, yeah, very good, Donna. This, this is, uh, so, so understand, two main reasons, right? Either because I'm, I'm saying, look, this is what we're, we're, we're doing next, so that, so that our readers keep watching for what we're, what we're doing and knowing that there, there's going to be uh, uh, other things done in the future, or uh, we want them to, to, to know that we are, we are, we're stopping here, but this is uh, a good point from, from which you can start. Uh, many times, uh, also in this conclusion uh, session, uh, people write about um, research research limitations right it's fair to do that because uh, yep yeah. no research limitations is the same of research problem no the research problem is the research problem is a different way of you to formulate your objective right uh, you may say the objective of this paper is uh, to understand uh, how innovation relates to crowdsourcing, for example, considering that I had already given that, well, crowdsourcing is some, some, one of the topics that I, I study. Uh, so that was my objective. I could say, well, my research question is, uh, how, how does 
um, innovation relates to to crowdsourcing. A research question is basically a way of formu formulating your objective into a question, right? Uh, but uh, that's different to research limitations. Uh, the research limitations, or the uh, uh, usually they show um, they show uh, potential problems of uh, even the, the results that you, you obtained. I mean, you obtained some results, but you know that let's say the sample you had uh, was not large enough for you to be as confident as you wished. Or, uh, for example, um, I had a student of mine doing some research on on Uberization, uh, the, uh, the the this. Um, situation well, well it, it's in, in her case it was specifically about uber and and the way people uh, uh, working uh, as uber drivers uh, were you know how, how uh, the, the idea was if if driving a, a, a for, for or, or being a uber driver uh, was uh, something uh, a possibility uh, let's say if that, if that was something uh, a good uh, a good possibility for someone who was unemployed or if that was uh, a situation in which uh, you know uh, work was was still diminished uh, even even more, uh, and we we believed at the beginning that uh, um, you know Uber driving was uh, a good alternative for people that were unemployed because that gave them uh, a possibility of getting some some money while unemployed, and and that was our assumption simply because I had taken several. Uh, rides with uh, Uber drives, uh, drives, uh, drivers that had told me, you know, I, I like being a, a Uber driver because when I go to a job interview, I'm not unemployed. So I said, I feel that I, I do not have to accept the first offer someone gives me simply because I already have a job. I'm a, uh, an Uber driver. So that was our assumption. Uh, then when, uh, when Fernanda, when this student of mine went to the field to collect data, she found out a lot of uh, evidence that also show, uh, has shown that uh, Uber driving was a precarization, let's say, it was turning uh, the uh, work, uh, it, it, it was diminishing work somehow, right? And why, but then she had a limitation in her study because she developed her study, the, the, the field study, during the pandemic. And, and a lot of uh, people who, who, were, who were Uber drivers then were feeling that their, their situation was much more fragile simply because at that stage they did not have another job and Uber driving was not also not being very, very good uh, as a way of getting an income because people were locked at home, right? Anyway, and then, so in, in her case, she considered that a research limitation. Uh, she thought that maybe if she had done the research in a different uh, time, maybe one year before or maybe two years after, uh, she could have a right, uh, uh, she could have reached different results, and this is why she pointed that as being a potential limitation of her study. Right? So usually, yeah, usually the, the 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 writer is the person who knows his or her, her work the best. Right? Nobody knows uh, the work so well as you do when you're writing something. So you have two alternatives: one that is not very ethical, that is, let's say. Uh, uh, um, hide the, the limitations of your study and, and pretend that your study is really robust when you know that it has problems. And the other is telling your reader, look, you may not have been able to realize, but there may be problems with my, my, my results. Maybe you should, uh, uh, I mean, it, it's interesting results, but maybe there uh, some, some additional uh, study needs to be done because this, pro this research project has the following limitations and then you include your limitations. I find I find that it's important to be honest uh, if we want uh, others to benefit from our research and understand its limits. It, it's 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 good, but uh, but there is some some risk involved, or there is some some uh, things that need to be taken into account. Okay, uh, Alex. Yeah, Donna. Yeah, I was going to say that because someone that um, uh, that researched research uh, put a lot of work in a in a research and find those that. The results weren't what they expected. They tried like what it was a waste of time. But it's not a waste of time because maybe there are things that you didn't consider while you did your research or things that were missing and you can place it right here. Yeah, and it's it's never uh, even when we do, when the results are not those that we expected, right? 
the study should be relevant uh, from the beginning it should be relevant because uh, uh, even if the results are not what we expect they will at least prevent others to have to do the same and to find that out right so uh, of course uh, I, I think we have to choose good objectives because we don't want to uh, we don't have to have an objective where we show that there is another white swan in the lake what I mean here is uh, it's it, it's it's boring for the reader and, and maybe uh, the gatekeepers the reviewers will probably find that the, the that research is also not relevant when when uh, you do a lot of research to prove what has already been proved proven before okay so new research that simply agrees with with everything that has been said before doesn't add anything new to the basket uh, uh, on, on the other uh, on the other hand if you are able to develop even uh, some humble research humble research but th that is able to show that whatever was considered very generalizable is not that so uh, for example you and this is what we usually say when you find that there is a well uh, a black swan in the lake and you say well uh, by simply having spot uh, uh, spotted a, a black swan I can already assure that not all swans are white as expected before right uh, that kind of research has a lot of value so sometimes we are we are we, we, we may be unlucky and our results are less meaningful le less powerful in whatever they are trying to explain than we expected but there's still uh, 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 if the design methodology was was good we'll probably still have some good results to, to, to report. Okay, uh, all right, and then we have a last se session uh, here that is references. I will not include a number for references because uh, for for whatever reason in, in, in most templates, even, well, as I told you, AMSYS does not include uh, numbered uh, sessions, right? But even when uh, numbered sessions are included, usually references are not numbered for whatever reason. But anyway, uh, I, I decided to include numbers here because, in general, I think that this is a good format uh, for a paper. A, a paper in which you have five sessions. One in which you introduce your problem, you introduce your research project, uh, and, and explains what your objective is and shows why that is relevant. Uh, one in which you present either the theoretical background or at least what others have done before and you show how, where, uh, everything that has done be, uh, before, which is the, this... Uh, session two, one session in which you you, you present uh, the methodology or the methodological procedures that are used in your in your in your work. Uh, oh, where is it? Uh, and uh, a fourth session in which you, you analyze the, the, the empirical data. Uh, but you notice you you do not analyze your empirical data empirically. You analyze your empirical data based on the the literature review that you had in chapter two. So chapter four and chapter two are very well connected to one another. Okay, uh, in fact, many times when you go to the field, you find things that you had not expected. You, you did not expect from your literature review. Many times you have to go back to your literature review to try to understand that, and you will uh, progress your, with your literature review in terms of including new material there that you can then, um, uh, you know in your uh, uh, discussion session you can refer to uh, in order to to get to to your conclusions right and then a last session session five with your conclusion or if you like that final considerations where you conclude about the, the objective this is mainly this conclusion about the objective involves again uh, 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 a review of the major findings uh, where you write about some uh, future research possibilities and where you write uh, the limitations of uh, your study. And this would be it as a, let's say, a formula for a theoretical empirical paper, right? Uh, at least this, this is a formula. It may not be the only one, but I challenge you, for example, to go to, um, uh, to the proceedings of a, a, a conference where you want to publish or to, the, to the, the website of the journal where you want to publish and check if the papers that they have there uh, follow such a structure or a structure that is similar to this one or not. I believe that most likely if it is a theoretical empirical paper, it will follow uh, uh, this structure, at least to some extent. Right. And so it it is a good uh, at least it's a, it's a good proposition of a 
report formula, let's say report uh, uh, a way of reporting your work. Now, uh, I don't know if any questions about this, any suggestions that, uh, of, of items to include here still? Um, I was trying to open my mic, but I had a little problem when you were speaking about um, the difference between a uh, systematic review and a uh, okay, well, it was not a systematic uh, uh, review. Uh, okay, oh, hang on. Hang on. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to Yeah. Okay, this is going to fail. Uh, so back to your question, Donna. Uh, yeah, theoretical background. Uh, I'm giving a, uh, uh, just this example. In, again, in information systems, uh, for example, the, the difference here may be whoever is uh, comes from a more uh, qualitative perspective may wish to discuss a theoretical background because they will say, look, this area is so positiv so positivistic that they think that there is only one reality there, right? But uh, I can assure you that reality is different uh, uh, for different people and whatever. And then they will provide us with a theoretical background uh, uh, that supports whatever perspective of the world they have that is different to, let's say, the perspective a, a, a positivistic researcher would have. Right? Uh, I usually say, for example, I have in, my, in the program where I teach, Especially in the in the business school, we have uh, a, a research group that they are they, they're Marxists, right? They they analyze the world always through the lenses of uh, Karl Marx and 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 his followers. So they see reality different to others who who have a different perspective to the world, right? And that perspective needs to be presented because otherwise. Uh, you don't understand the research that, that, that they're doing simply because you're looking through it's I, I always say that it's almost like if you wear glasses to to understand the world if I put my glasses I see things one way if I, instead of putting this glass that I have here I, I put some glasses with uh, tinted lenses I will see the world differently so different th theoretical backgrounds would be almost like putting different glasses in front of your eyes and there therefore okay. see, seeing the world differently uh, I, 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 so some of you, the, the ones of you who are more uh, uh, into into phenomen, phenomen, phenomenological research and more more uh, uh, more qualitative research, will probably have to deal with that. Uh, those of you who are more into, into very pract practical analysis uh, won't have to concern too much about this. I wanted to show you what, another thing that I, I spared here for you, and uh, that's this. Um, uh, I. Well, we usually, uh, we, and we have been discussing here the, the paper from a perspective of the writer, right? This guy's here, uh, well, this guy here uh, wrote uh, a paper on the task of the referee. The referee is the, the reviewer. Uh, and I mean, we're all, at some stage, we are authors. In other stage, we are the reviewers, right? And I, I think I've already told you that one good thing that you can do, mainly for those of you who are doctoral students, uh, Whenever you have a, 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 whenever someone invites you to review papers for a conference, do that because it's the easiest way of you to learn <coughs> how to write better papers. Reviewing other people's papers. I, I'm sure I've already commented that with you, that we, when we're reviewing other people's uh, papers, we find mistakes more easily than we find in our own work. So there are two things that we have to do, is and and, and they relate to, to, to this. We find uh, uh, problems in other people's work more easily than we find in our own, for two reasons. First, because uh, well, we're there in, in their case, we're there to find mistakes, right? And when we're writing our own papers, we're not there to find mistakes. We're there to write the paper. So it's a different approach. Uh, when when someone uh, uh, hires you to then say point out the problems, you will find it. So that, that's a perspective that we should develop with our own work as well. Try and at, uh, after we finish it or uh, or at some stage decide now I'm going to read my own work if I were a reviewer. Right? And I would only try to find the problems with it, and then we will find problems. It's, it's, it's very different the approach that we have to a, to a paper when we are reading it because it's been published and we want to, to have access to that content, uh, and when we are reading it as a reviewer. Right? When we are reading something that is already published, we assume that it's, it doesn't have uh, at least it doesn't have any major problem, so we are really much more interested in in, in the whole thing. When we are when we are reading something because uh, we're the reviewers, we are looking for problems. 
And whenever we're looking for problems, I can assure you, we find problems. Right? So even if you get the best uh, the papers published in the, in the best journals of the world, if you one day decide, I'm going to read this, but I'll, I'll read it with the, the reviewer's mind, you will see that maybe the objective is not so clearly stated, that the well, some of the literature that was presented was not used to, to analyze the data in, later on the paper, the, the way we, we said that we should do. All those things will, will show there, right? Most likely will show there. Even in papers published in very good journals, even in very good papers, it's always possible to improve. And, and, and a, a, a reviewer will always find something that could be made clearer or, or otherwise uh, better than it was before. So it's, I think it's a good advice to tell you whenever you have the possibility of reading other people's work, do it. And in fact, we will we'll do that here in our, in our seminars, right? This is uh, something that we plan to do. From now on, I hope that you already have some idea of a paper that you could uh, write, write on, or at least that you could draft uh, uh, on information systems. Uh, you, you start thinking of a methodology. Of course, in the next classes, we will be talking uh, about specific methodologies, uh, uh, and, 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 and that will improve uh, your, let least say, at least your, the, the, the amount of tools that you have to do that. But, uh, but basically, we, we already have a, 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 an idea of what we'll have to do. And, and by, by the end of this uh, program, what we'll do is we will read each other's work as reviewers. Right? So I will include this, uh, 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 this, this paper that I'm showing uh, here to you. I will include that in our Moodle this afternoon. I'll do that. Uh, because I, uh, during, during last week, I, I, I went back to it to check if it was suitable to us. And, and I found it really interesting because whatever this guy is saying, well, look, this is important for you as a reviewer. I said, well, but this is also important for us as, as writers, right? So very quickly, I, I summarize some of the, 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 the things that uh, were said in this paper here. For example, uh, he says that uh, when you're the, the reviewer, you have to check if the work presented is correct, if the problem studied and the results obtained are new and significant, if the quality of the presentation is satisfactory or can be made uh, satisfactory, if uh, 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 or, or what revisions and changes to the paper are necessary and are desirable. Well, look, that's something that we should be looking in, in, in our own work, right? If we have, we just finished a, a, a paper, we, we, dis, we, we think it's good to be published, and then let's reread it with our reviewers' uh, mindset to it, right? And then we'll, we'll have to check these things, okay? Uh, let me see what else say. So the... So in, in general, referees uh, are, are or should be impartial external experts that evaluate our papers, uh, well, these peer review, uh, reviewers. They are people that are there doing uh, some work for free. And uh, the author says here somewhere in the paper later on, they're doing for free something that we would not be able to pay for. I mean, most of us in academia, when we are asked to do a, a review, it's 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 a work that we do for 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 the community, and, and we do it for free. Uh, if 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 a, if a journal or a conference is asks me to to do a review, I will do it. I will spend three four hours, maybe more than that, reviewing a paper, and I will charge nothing. But if someone told me uh, uh, we want to pay you to do that, and I say, well, then then it's not going to be affordable. Uh, think of the reviewers as people who are reading your, your paper for free, giving you advice for free. And if, if people ask them, uh, can I buy your time so that you do that? They will say, no, you can't, because it will be too expensive. So we should not think of reviewers as people that are being mean to us and putting our work down. We should think of reviewers as people that are there. They, they don't know that, that that's us, but they're, they're putting their time into trying to suggest ways in which that work, that work can be better uh, or improved. Uh, so that in the future it becomes it, it gets the quality that it, that it should have to be published at that specific uh, specific outlet, right? Okay. Uh, uh, what what is a publishable paper? Uh, so this entire article is intended to address the question of what is a publishable paper. We, sh we should be we should be able to to assess at least if our own paper is publishable. Well, it's basically a paper that has enough contribution. Okay. So sometimes even small results which are surprising uh, and, and might spark new research should be, should be published because they allow others to have uh, their own insights. 
Papers which are mostly repetitions of other papers should not. Right? So this again to something that uh, Donna had asked me. Uh, we don't want to write another paper to say that all, uh, all swans in the lake are white. If that's something that everyone already knows, uh, I will only write a paper when I, when, I, when I can say, well, you know, they're not all white because I found a pink one. That's interesting. Confirming, yes, I, I, I went through the trouble of checking and they're all white. We'll say, what's new about that? We already knew that they were all, all white. So we either challenge previously existing research or we build on it or we, we include some addition. Even, even if it's a small, a small contribution, it should be there. Uh, I, I, I want to very quickly go through the, some questions that appear here. I will, I will send you the, the, the version of the, this version of this paper here with my highlights here so that you can go straight to, to things that I have already uh, considered interesting here. But I want to show you some of the questions. Let me see where it is. Uh, uh, issues in evaluating a research paper. Is there any reason to care about the results of this paper, assuming uh, for the moment that they were uh, assuming for the moment that they're correct? Notice it's not just a matter of writing a correct paper, but is is this paper does it bring uh, any any anything that is new, right? Is the problem or goal major, minor, tri trivial, or non-existent? Of course, if it's trivial or non-existent, it's the chances of being published are very small. Uh, uh, if we have a, a minor contribution and the paper is well written. That's already something, right? Is the problem so specific or so applied as to have no general applicability? Again, we want to write papers, even if, we're, if, if, if our paper is based on a single case and we are analyzing one specific situation, I can assure you the world is only interested in it because they think that there is something that, that could be generalized. Sometimes the, some understanding, some, some, some ideas. Uh, if, if, if something is only applicable to a specific situation, it only cares, it, 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 only, it, it is only interesting to, to those that are directly involved with that situation. But even from specific cases, we can uh, uh, generate results that, although they are not necessarily statistically generalizable, they are at least, uh, uh, in terms of arguments, they can be generalized. That's, that's something interesting. Is the problem, uh, sorry, uh, is this a trivial variation or, a, or an extension of previous results? Is the author aware of uh, related and previous work. This is wh what Antonio was saying. We have to talk about uh, uh, work that has already been done to show that we are aware of their work and at the same time to say, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'll start from where someone else has uh, stopped. Okay. Does, uh, 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 well, uh, in, in, in case it's made, uh, uh, there were other work before, does, does the author cite the work? Are distinctions between these and previous work given and are they specific? Uh, if the work describes uh, an implementation, are there any new ideas? Is the method of approach valid? Notice chapter three of our our uh, of our paper. Remember chapter chapter, th chapter three is the the re research methodology. Is it valid? Because if the reader doesn't or the reviewer and the reader later on does not consider that your method is valid, your results are not going to be valid valid either. Okay. Uh, so these are questions that usually the editor asks the, the, the reviewer to answer uh, either directly and explicitly in their, in their, review, their reviews or at least to, to make a decision. Right? Uh, is the goal of the paper significant? Is the actual execution of the, the research correct? If, 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 it's not, if it's not precise, if it's not well done, it's not be, going to be acceptable. So notice that many uh, are, are the correct conclusions being drawn from the results. By the way, this is this is something interesting. Sometimes people do a perfect job of analyzing their data, and then when they get to the conclusion, they conclude about something else. Your conclusion has to be well anchored in the findings that you have in your research. Otherwise, uh, it's uh, they're they're worth nothing, right? So uh, uh, what, what what did you learn? See, there's a lot of questions here. Uh, I wish you check these questions. Is the, present, is, is the presentation satisfactory? Notice this is basic on, only format. But if the format is not uh, agreeable, if people don't enjoy reading, they are going to say no. This is uh, they can't even pay attention to to, to, to the the real content. So we have to the, the format has to be clear and good enough so that people focus on the on the, the results. Right? 
Well, anyway, uh, we, 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 this is taking a, a, a little longer than, than, than I wished. I will send you this, um, this paper a, a, as well. Again, think of it as it was, th this one here was written as advice for reviewers. But I want you to check it and see uh, how, the, the lessons that you get as authors. Because whatever the reviewer is checking in your work, it is something that you should have already thought of and included there. Okay? Right, uh, I don't know if you have any other questions for now, ideas, as I was telling you. I would, yeah. I would have a, another comment. Uh, when you were talking about the methodology, um, I sometimes use a methodology from uh, uh, papers I review mm -hmm. and uh, maybe add uh, like certain things that I'm interested in to, to complement the, the methodology. Okay. Uh, you, you, uh, so I refer to it, I refer to them mm -hmm. the methodology. Not only um, mention the, the method, but I'll also say I reference the the paper that um, I'm. So sometimes, well, I don't know if that's that's what you're doing. Sometimes you replicate someone else's re, uh, research in a different environment, and of course, when you're doing that, if you you can even use exactly the same methodology, and say I want to replicate this research in a different environment because I I, I have reasons to believe that I will find uh, a black swan here, right? Of course, the risk is you may replicate the, someone else's research in your environment and find out that it's exactly the same as what happened in, previously. And in that case, you, you found another white swan in the lake. Uh, your research is not going to be very interesting. Of course, if it was, if, if, if it was a, 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 let's say, a, a theory that has more very recently been developed, still having other people replicating uh, will help make that, uh, uh, that theory stronger. Uh, but you can also find uh, results that are, are different and then show, look, what, what these guys found in their research is interesting, but uh, it's not so general because I found some black swans here in, in my, my research. That's, that's something that could happen there. And of course, you're saying that it's not just a, what, what you did was not just a replication, Donna. Uh, what you're doing or, or what you did was using someone else's methodology and improve, do some, some continuous improvement there uh, and, and, and perfect it somehow. Uh, the, the, the important thing there is to explain very well in the research methodology chapter why you think that your, 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 improved, your, your, your procedures are better than, than what uh, the original authors had used in their research. Uh, and of course, providing whatever validation is necessary depending on the kind of, uh, of research that you're doing. Okay. Well, all right, guys. Uh, uh, next week we we, we go on. Uh, we I, I want to start next week. We'll probably start with uh, already with some um, quantitative uh, research analysis. We, we want to start slowly, uh, uh, and we will build. Uh, and, and and then in the next uh, few weeks we'll have quantitative and qualitative analysis, and and even mixed methods uh, being discussed. We'll have some of our colleagues from the Latin American Caribbean Association of Information Systems chapter here to help. Uh, with that as well, so that you're not always, you know, only thinking or or, or only exposed to my thinking of, of this, of course. I, and, and and again, when I show you and tell you that, that that's the way I do, uh, I wish you, you, you take that as uh, the way someone who's been doing this for quite a while does it, not necessarily the, the, the only way and not, not necessarily even the best way of doing it. All right. Okay, so uh, see you guys uh, next week. Uh, and, uh, and and I will include all this material uh, there for you uh, in, in our mood, okay? See you guys. Bye.